What is up my fellow bro gamers, Mr. J313, back again, and on today's video, I have a very special treat for all of you. I'm going to be doing a podcast collaboration with the fellow Mass Effect YouTuber, Darkblade15, and we're going to be discussing Mass Effect Andromeda's health and the community as a whole, as well as what's going on in the Mass Effect world, and moving back to Mass Effect 3, and just kind of our general thoughts and ramblings about Mass Effect as a whole. So I do hope you guys enjoy this video and I do want to say real quick I apologize for the audio quality. It's not the best but regardless I hope you guys enjoy the video. So let's get right into it. What's up guys? I am here with Darkblade today and we are going to be talking about some Mass Effect and in its current state. Well thanks for having me here Mr. J. Uh, pleasure as always, as, well, Mass Effect Andromeda, well, the entire Mass Effect franchise has been uh, one of the core pillars of what my YouTube channel has been. Uh, and same goes for you, because um, oh, yeah. you focus mainly on Mass Effect, thing, Mass Effect content with the odd, odd other thing here and there. Um, I think we all dabble in other, uh, other games here and there, but Mass Effect has been a, a constant for both of us, I feel. For sure, yeah. Whenever my friend Brian and I, when we started our channel, we did want to branch out and just kind of do whatever we played, but Mass Effect Andromeda especially is really what we had started off of, and in its current state, it's interesting to see from how it went and being a long-time Mass Effect player and then starting YouTube with Andromeda. I know you started on 3, was it yeah. not? Yeah, it was Mass Effect 3 that I did my first... For, yeah, it was, I think, the human adept when it, when Mass Effect 3 launched and I just started doing these random class guides. I don't think they were even in HD at the time. <laughs> um, oh, but they were they were, fu they were fun to make. They were nice little... The, the character builds were just enough that you can make a nice little video of and, and right. inform yeah. people on different builds and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, yeah, I got into it with Mass Effect 3. Uh, and like you said, you got, in, got into it with Andromeda. Um, which, I mean, what was there was a five-year gap, I think, between the two games? I believe so, from, I think it was, I'm not even sure, I know it was 2012 with three, but I'm not sure a month. Yeah, I think, I, I want to say March, but I could be wrong, March or April. I think it was the spring end of things, but it was a while ago now. That, that does, that, it sounds right, it sounds like it's in within that time frame, but... Yeah. That five-year gap was, uh, you can definitely feel that five-year gap. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's heartwarming in some respects because Mass Effect freeze multiplayer, even, though, even with Andromeda out and it being, uh, well, I'm doing quote-unquote, you know, quotation marks here, maybe technically advanced, but uh, Mass Effect 3 is still, <laughs> Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, sorry, is still being played to this gate, to this day. So it survived that you know, five plus years and people are still, still enjoying it, which is, like I said, oh, yeah. it's heartwarming. It means that maybe at the time, maybe Bioware and EA didn't think they were, they were just making a tacked on multiplayer, but it's turned into something probably they didn't expect. Yeah. You know, I have to agree because with that five years, you know, most, most average games these days don't last anywhere near that long, especially with content. Now, Mass Effect 3 definitely brought a lot of content, and knowing that Andromeda isn't going to have that content, that's what's disheartening. But yeah, you are right. It is it is heartwarming to know that people still do play Mass Effect 3. And personally, I can only speak for the Xbox community because that is the system I'm playing on, but I can get on it usually any time of the day and just join a random match and I'll be in a full lobby. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm kind of restricted to the PlayStation side of things. And uh, I know you guys on Xbox, on the Xbox One, you've got the backwards compatibility. So that, that's really great for you lot. Uh, and those who, uh, who um, play on PC and that, they've obviously got access to their Mass Effect 3, <coughs> excuse me, um, with no issues there. Um, I think both communities for the Xbox and the PC are completely healthy. PlayStation, not so much because you have to hook up your PlayStation 3 again and then actually go a full generation back if you want to play Mass Effect Freeze multiplayer. Although uh, prior to um, Mass Effect Andromeda's launch, the PlayStation Mass Effect 3 community, there was still it was still there. Maybe it didn't sound quite as healthy as it 
as it sounds on the Xbox or the PC at the moment, but there was still nonetheless some some attention still. And yeah, I I remember around the launch and just a few weeks before Andromeda was released, I was constantly seeing people live streaming and videos of Mass Effect 3. It was an everyday deal for the the following weeks or the upcoming weeks until Andromeda was released. And I was like, wow, I cannot believe there's this many people still playing it. And I remember about a month or so after Andromeda, I was kind of on the content side of Andromeda, at least for multiplayer, because I'd already kind of ran to a point in the story where I was like, okay, I want to, you know, play a lot of multiplayer now. Yeah. And I was, I kind of thought to myself, well, how is the Mass Effect community still doing for Mass Effect 3 multiplayer? Because I would have kind of figured there would still be some people there, but whenever I got there, there was no one. It was a ghost town for Mass Effect 3. But granted, you know, everyone had moved to Andromeda. Yeah. But now knowing that just six months later, it seems like everyone's flooding back to Mass Effect 3. Yeah, it's 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 kind of scary. It's been such a short time and already people are sort of jumping ship, so to speak. I mean I mean, don't get me wrong, there are still there are still you can still get lobbies really quickly and easily on Andromeda. It's not completely abandoned. But there is a there is a substantial percentage that have either given up on Mass Effect altogether or, like you said, gone back to previous games. Oh yeah. And see, that's something I kind of wanted to ask you about. Why do you think people are leaving Andromeda? Now, there's plenty of reasons on why it could be, you know, the announcement of no DLC support. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons why. Yeah. Is because we aren't going to have any single-player expansions. And seeing back to what the previous Mass Effects had with all of the content that they released over a, just a year of time. Yeah. But then Mass Effect Andromeda only being here for six months, and then they announced there will be no further updates, no DLC, nothing. Yeah, it's quite disheartening. And and, and like you said, um, the other Mass Effect games, they had their DLCs uh, or their multiplayer updates, which I, I got to tip my hat that their multiplayer stuff is all free. Uh, but but, but <clears throat> yeah, all their updates, contents, DLCs, it all was very quick after the, the the launch of the said game. So Mass Effect 2, over the course of the following year, they had, um, I'm trying to remember the DLCs now, but uh, uh, with Mass Effect 3, I can remember them a bit better, like uh, the Citadel DLC and stuff like that. Um, right. Even going on to other Bioware games, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition was probably the most recent one, bar Andromeda. And they had their DLC pretty much released over the course of the year, both single player and multiplayer. Um that I feel that the no single player news and on top of that the no further patch patches um, for the single player is one of the key reasons. I think also a reason why people are leaving Andromeda is because of um, prob- probably being influenced by the media a little bit. I I, I don't want to you know <clears throat> blame the media for it because everyone's it was their opinion and at the time of release, Mass Effect Andromeda was not um, up to the par or standard of the other Mass Effect games. Um, right. Not, namely in terms of story and presentation. Uh, its gameplay uh, is, would, I would, me personally, I find the gameplay gets a pass, but the other aspects, like I said, presentation and story, it could have used a little bit more work. I think ultimately, if... Um, Mass Effect and if Bioware and EA had held on to uh, Andromeda to the point where maybe they would release it say now for a fourth quarter release um, it might have been better received if if the game was released now in its state it is at the moment with all the extra multiplayer stuff all the addresses to its presentation and other bugs it may have been better received I don't think it would have got glowing reviews but I think it wouldn't it wouldn't be as damaging as as the reviews were back in March. Right. And you know that's a good point. And bringing that up, that having a fourth quarter time frame that would have been really great because it would have given him those extra six months to really polish the game. Yeah. But that begs the question: Would sales have been affected because it's having to compete with all of these? 
fourth quarter games. You know, we have Destiny 2 getting released here very soon. Yeah, that, that, that is very, very true. And I think that's probably one of the key reasons why EA and Bioware, I don't know if it was EA or Bioware, or Joy, both of them pushed for that, maybe that early release to get ahead of, of uh, games like Destiny 2 and the new Call of Duty right. and so on and so forth. Um, also, they probably didn't want it to be in competition with Battlefield, uh, not ba- Battlefield, sorry, Battlefront 2, Star Wars. Um, obviously, that being another major EA title. That is a very good point. You know, it would have to compete with that, with those other titles. And that, that is something that kind of EA seemed to have done in the past, how they did with Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2. Yeah. Both EA games and releasing in that close tight just a few weeks apart from each other and it kind of makes you think why they did it with they didn't do it with Andromeda and you know Andromeda is probably a much larger title than Titanfall that being one of the big reasons why they didn't do it so that that is a good point about them not wanting to do it and killing sales for one reason or another but there could be a lot of reasons and a lot of things that we as a community might not know yeah and we can only really just guess or speculate why they would have done it but you know, it could all be that they're just abandoning abandoning it for Anthem. There's yeah. a lot of different things that it could be. I, I, I mean, I, I agree with you there. I do feel that in some respects. I mean, like you said, it is speculation. It's, we don't know what goes on behind the curtain. But um, Anthem, in a way, feels like a replacement to the Mass Effect series. Um, it feels like Anthem has had more effort and that put into it rather when compared to Andromeda, at least from what we've seen so far. Um, it's also, pro- I mean, EA are, EA are strategists at the end of the day. They want to make money, and they probably are jumping on, trying to combine sort of like the likes of Mass Effect, that universe, with uh, the likes of sort of like Destiny and seeing how successful that has been for Activision and Bungie. Yeah, they, at the end of the day, they are strategists, and they have to figure out how they're going to be able to work best for themselves. That's really how it's going to be at the end of the day. And it is it is sad to see that, but that's how it's going to be. And I, I do agree with you. I feel as though Anthem is going to be a replacement for Mass Effect. And while I hope that is not the case, it just yeah. kind of seems like it is. Yeah, I, I I agree too. I mean, I hope there's there's always that there's always that small glimmer of light that we may get oh, a yeah. a another Mass Effect game further down the line, but I don't think it's going to be for a while. I think we're going to have to. It's going to be at least after you know, well after Anthem's release and that. And um, I suppose EA and Bioware are also seeing how well if Anthem is another flop, then maybe they'll go back to Mass Effect sooner. But if it's not, then we could even wait even longer for a Mass Effect title. Yeah, I I feel like if there is going to be an in, an Andromeda quotation mark two yeah. or whatever they do choose to announce it as or title it as, I feel like it's going to be very far down the road. And I don't know, and I know there are two different sides to Bioware. I can't remember separately what they're called, but I'm kind of curious if who's going to take over Mass Effect? Will it be the first team? Will it be the A team or the B team? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. the question. Yeah, that's a, good, that's, a, that's a good way to put it. The A team and the B team. <laughs> As most most most, uh, most um, game developers seem to have uh, that sort of setup. <laughs> right. And I feel like that's kind of what happened with Mass Effect is they kind of passed it on and began working on Anthem and why they chose to go that route instead of really continuing a solid Mass Effect series. It's kind of beyond me because of how well Mass Effect always seemed to be as a game and its sales were always good. It always had good reviews and then it just, it sank. Yeah. And it's bizarre in in some respects in that because as, as far as I can remember off the top of my head, the sales for Andromeda were not too bad. They weren't, 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 compared to some of the other games that have been released recently and that, they weren't, weren't right, awful. Yeah. But um, I think EA were expecting a lot higher than they got. I mean, which which ultimately led them to the decision of, you know, disbanding, not disbanding Bioware, but merging the team with other areas of EA and whatnot. 
Right. And, you know, thinking about it and going back to Mass Effect 3, and coming back and playing it, it seems like for the content that we got multiplayer-wise, now I am strictly speaking for multiplayer and not the story side of Mass Effect, but of course. with multiplayer content on Mass Effect 3, we did get a lot of DLCs. And, you know, it was free on 3, and it's free on Andromeda, and there were not only a lot of characters, but a lot of maps and weapons and just other small events that they gave us, which is something that Andromeda, as we now know, won't get after the next couple of characters probably, you know, we don't have a solid number yet, but if I had to guess after this human juggernaut, I'm feeling like it's going to be three. Yeah, I agree. We I, have, uh, I think we have two. Sorry, go oh. on. <laughs> <laughs> we have two uncommon slots and an ultra rare slot in the character selection. So that's really why I feel it's only going to be three more. Yeah. And after that, but I really feel like it's going to be done. Yeah, uh, and if, if the pattern, uh, the trend of how they're releasing these characters continues, I think you're right. Um, they seem to be releasing the character at the start, the first week of every month. Uh, at least that's what they've done since the game's launch. And so we'll have October's character, November's character, and then December's character. And then that's probably going to be it for the, you know, at least probably for the, for the future of content, unfortunately. Um it's a little bit depressing to hear, you know, think of it like that. I mean, I'm hoping that the new characters add a certain flair to keep us coming back at least every now and again. But um, right. it is it is a little bit disheartening. I think is the right word to say here. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I do want. I I would. It, oh, I'm trying to think of the right words. I want. I wanted Mass Effect to do well. Um, but despite all that's happened with the game and that, I would still like to see some, at least a small part of the multiplayer community continue with it. Uh, not completely abandon ship, but maybe, um, well, like, like, like how in some respects, um, all those, like how Mass Effect 3's multiplayer has been going for all these years, I would like to think there's a small community to keep the Andromeda multiplayer going as well, at least for a little while longer. But with... Yeah, I, I do agree. I, I don't want to see Andromeda completely fall off. I, I definitely don't. But I would like to see whoever is going to be leaving to at least come back to Mass Effect 3 for at least while they can, because... You know, there's going to be a lot of AAA titles releasing here in these next couple of months. Yeah. And, you know, everyone is going to be split between playing all these new games. But I would still like to see the Mass Effect community as a whole either playing over Andromeda for quite some time, at least for these new characters, yeah. or going back to Mass Effect 3 to enjoy what it brought. Because it, it did have a lot to offer. Yeah. There, there is a lot there. If... I remember correctly these next characters coming out for Andromeda. Now, if there really is only going to be three, this is counting everything, even the male-female differences. There's yeah. 32 characters in Andromeda, and there was a total of 60, and that's including the Battlefield 3 soldier in yeah. Mass Effect. I, I was, I was going to say, during, during one of the recent streams I done, I was, uh, we were comparing... Uh, what Mass Effect 3 brought and what Mass Effect Andromeda has brought. And... Yeah, yeah. I said it was about 60 characters from Mass Effect 3 compared to, well, you, you said it was like 30, 32 for Andromeda? 32. Yeah, so right. that's that's double the amount of characters. Um, I think in terms of fire bases, including the, the hazard variations, there was like 19, maybe 20 fire bases in Mass Effect 3. There's probably half that in Andromeda, unfortunately. Not too sure yeah. when it comes to weaponry, the difference in numbers, unfortunately, off the top of my head. But um, well, when it when it comes to weapons, you know, we kind of got to think we can't really. Andromeda kind of messed us up with weapons because of the the new types, the yeah. passive <laughs> siphon and bulwark. I, I don't want to count them as weapons. That yeah, I don't really know how I felt about them doing that. No, I wasn't too happy at this. I wasn't too happy at the start, but. I seem to I've gone got, got a little bit fond of the siphon weapons, but that's about it. Um, 
and well, trying to get any of them siphons that with ultra rare weapons is is mm, yeah. <laughs> trying. But but um, the other thing about Mass Effect Three, which I would, which I've always said from day one, which is far better about Mass Effect 3's multiplayer when compared to Mass Effect Andromeda, is um, is ironically is is the enemies, the enemy factions in Mass Effect Three are these established these, well terrifying races that had a lot more character than the races we fight against in Mass Effect Andromeda's multiplayer. Uh, the Reapers and Collectors uh, alone could top any of the races in terms of the, the, the fear they brought, the feeling of fighting them uh, when compared to the Andromeda races. Right, and, and you know I do have to agree because it's going to beg a point that uh, my friend Adam and I, we spoke about um, when you're, whenever you look at the Andromeda enemies online and you kind of, like, let's take the Ket, for example, there's nothing really special about them that they can do. You know, the Destin has the little smoke that they can throw down to turn anyone invisible. Yeah. But that's, beyond that, that's really as far as anything special they can do. That's really it. And then when you look at Mass Effect 3, you know, you had so many different enemy types and how they could buff their team as well as debuff the players and it was just crazy to think about that yeah on all of the different things that they could do uh, i mean one of the things uh going with the enemies that i feel that um uh, mass effect andromeda the, the developers kind of well they kind of shot themselves in the foot was when they nerfed the insta kill or sync kills the by removing it pretty much um right. i felt in mass effect 3 small player Certain enemy types, the uh, Praetorians, Banshees, uh, Brutes, Phantoms, um, Atlases, they all posed a terrifying risk because they could, especially stuff, like, especially like the Phantoms and that, they could sneak up on you and next thing you got a sword through your stomach and you're out of the round. <laughs> um, and and that, that certain sense of uh, fear uh, really added to the challenge and made it... Well, made it, yeah, a more challenging game. Uh, I mean, okay, Mass Effect Andromeda has recently recently got Platinum difficulty, and that in itself is can at times be challenging, but it doesn't it doesn't feel quite the same when compared to the challenge you got from Mass Effect Three uh, on any other difficulties. Yeah, I I really do have to agree with you there. Mass Effect 3 was definitely much more challenging than Andromeda. Probably, well, you know, now we know that it'll... Mass Effect 3 will be more difficult than Mass Effect Andromeda ever will be because it won't change from here on out. And yeah. it's, it's sad to think about that, about how they're leaving it and what they could have done differently to make it better or make it more challenging. Yeah. And it's really thinking about Mass Effect 3, everything that could insta-kill you versus really nothing can now in Andromeda. There are those sync attacks, but they will just set you in a down state now. Yeah. And that is, that is, in a sense, good because it sometimes it can be a little frustrating yeah. because there's always going to be that issue of lag or just some glitch that happens, something grabbing you through a wall. And, and I, but, think, I think that's also, it's also new, a bit more newcomer friendly as well when the insta-kills just put you down. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, it, it definitely does kind of cater to newer players. I kind of feel like that's something that they wanted to set out because the game is in a completely new galaxy and just everything is... They more or less started with a new slate. It seems like they wanted to cater to more newer players, bringing them in. Yeah. But I feel like that was the problem, is since they catered to newer players and they wanted to bring more people in, how they've presented Andromeda is probably going to leave newer people with a sour taste in their mouth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and, and and with a franchise, with uh, Mass Effect as a, as a whole, I think it's, it's, an, it's a well-established franchise. There's not going to be many people jumping on board with the Andromeda title, so to speak. I mean, if people were interested in Mass Effect, they've probably gone back and experienced a Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 beforehand. Um but uh, I will say this, though, about Mass Effect uh, Andromeda's multiplayer. I think the most difficult thing it can offer is the uh, platinum difficulty with the modifier you only, uh, only live once. I think that's the hardest challenge you've got to get on that. Oh, so. most definitely. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, 
That is definitely that's a, that's a difficult one right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't think I don't think I've actually successfully done it if I think off the top of my head. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's 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 such a shame because um, want, wanted it. To, I wanted Andromeda to do to do well in that, and but I think I think uh, the the general the casual gamer is has lost interest. Um, from from how quick it is to get lobbies to uh, even to sort of like YouTube video views and that you can tell there's a difference between Mass Effect Three and Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh, well, definitely there is definitely a huge difference in, like you just said, YouTube views for the two separate games, and that is that is a big thing. And I'm wondering now if more people come back to Mass Effect Three, if we could see. Mass Effect 3 come back as content for YouTube or if there's already so much out if there's nothing really left to cover or if people would be interested because I know personally on my channel I've I've asked some of my subscribers if they would like for me to post content on Mass Effect 3 and I, I have had people say that they would love to see more Mass Effect 3 content so yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see if that's a trend that we'll start seeing here as Mass Effect Andromeda slowly starts to die away as far as content goes. I mean, in, in, some, in some respects, I think there will, will always be a place for um, uh, Mass Effect, especially Mass Effect free multiplayer content, uh, because of the way Andromeda has been received in that. And over the next, well, e hell, e even thinking long term, over the next uh, months, years even, because there will be still that loyal fan base to Mass Effect, and they will still want to see um, uh, see what either go back and watch uh, Mass Effect multiplayer stuff, or even if newcomers, you know, you know, um, youngsters now they grow up into teenagers and they hear about Mass Effect, which was a milestone in gaming. They want to, you know, they, then they can see that even there still may even be a place for them to go play it if, if that makes sense i i get what you're saying there's that generation gap that always goes between at least in the video game world different games for what they're really going to grow up on and where they start in a franchise but i feel like you you're right mass effect will always kind of have its place as a game that should always be played no yeah. matter when you're coming into it you should always go back and play through all of them because Mass Effect is just an amazing franchise with a great story and yeah. characters and development over all of these games. And I, I really do, I have to agree, I think it is always going to have a place Definitely. to be played. I mean, I mean, the, the, the single player for the original trilogy, I would, I would highly recommend to anyone who's at all interested in, in sort of like a, a sci-fi uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a soap opera or a space drama. Um, it's it's <laughs> it's 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 a fun joy ride, and and everyone it's a personal experience for everyone playing it as well because of the uh, the amount of choices you have and stuff like that. Although obviously some people weren't happy with Mass Effect Freeze ending, but regardless of that, the journey to get there is filled with things that will be different from person to person. Right. Every, everyone will have it a at least slightly different experience based on all of the choices you can make and just generally how you want to play the game because there are so many different ways you can. And that's one great thing that I think Mass Effect had, has going for it is just the variety in the way you can play it. I yeah. think that is one of the great things that it always had going for it. Definitely. From... from either being a paragon or renegade to what class you play to to what crew crew members you use there's, there's so many options oh yeah most definitely there is there is always something you could choose or start a new playthrough and play through it entirely different there is always always something to choose and get different outcomes and that's that was one of the biggest reasons why I love Mass Effect the first three so much is because I sunk so many unbelievable hours into it trying to see all of the different things I could get out of the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I, that's, I must confess, one of the reasons I got into Mass Effect Freeze multiplayer so much was because 
uh, went through the story of one, two, then three, and it's like I still want more. And Mass Effect, Mass Effect 3's multiplayer kind of gives you that little bit of extra um, to keep you entertained after the main story is kind of drawn to its end and its conclusion. Um, and, and that's what I liked about the multiplayer of Mass Effect 3 when it first launched. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. It definitely does bring at least that core gameplay for Mass Effect, and it lets you continue it, and it, it'll feed you your Mass Effect kind of high that you are yeah. looking for, so to speak. Yeah. And I feel like that is something that Andromeda had a good idea on. It was just poor representation for continuing the story through Apex missions. Yeah. I feel like they could have done better on it. How? I don't really know, yeah. but I just feel like they kind of s did it a little sloppy, yeah. so to speak. I think I think uh, with Andromeda's story being maybe a little bit of under par compared to the original trilogy, that obviously made it hard for them to incorporate, you know, Apex missions in a way that made it feel meaningful, meaningful and and important. Yeah. No, talking about importance, it really just seemed like through Mass Effect 3, it seemed like everything was definitely important. Everything you did had a meaning behind it. Yeah. And then even going into multiplayer, all of the characters seemed like they really fit in within a lore, at least, so to speak. Because for Mass Effect 3, the multiplayer, in a sense, was tied to the story, so to speak, in a yeah. way. Well, and I, the Andromeda multiplayer was as well. But it is, it's like uh, the way, I mean, the way I see it with Mass Effect 3 and, and its multiplayer, basically Mass Effect 3 put the stakes as pretty much high as you can get them. Uh, you know, with organics facing pretty much extinction, we have to club together, otherwise, you know, well, we're all dead. Um, with Andromeda, they're doesn't seem to be those stakes there as as much anyway and i and, right. I, and I think that that um that kind of affected the uh the the sort of like um the background for for any sort of multiplayer activity in in either of the games yeah i I could definitely see that it it did have an effect on it and you know, looking forward in the future for what importance Mass Effect could bring, and going back, kind of talking about DLC or other things that it that they could have brought, and that's really where the character side comes in, is the characters that they brought to Andromeda, why they brought them, and you know, that kind of begs the question on why they kind of tease all of this core and arc DLC yeah. and bringing Batarians in. Because that's another thing. We we had never known that there were Batarians in Andromeda. They just kind of Straight showed up. up. <laughs> yeah. They were actually there the whole time. We just never knew. Well, why would they do all of these things but then choose to not really continue it? Now, I know that they said that they would continue the Quarian arc and its fate through comics and novels, but is that really how they're going to actually talk about the Corian arc will we ever see it in another game or yeah. anything uh, like that i mean i was speculating with someone uh, earlier today actually that um it would uh, the Corian arc potentially it could be a big enough it could have a story big enough to warrant a sequel to mass effect andromeda mass effect andromeda 2 could be um uh, sort of like sub not subtitled but an additional title of I can't remember it off the top of my head but the name of what the Quarian, Quarian arc was called I cannot remember for the life of me what that Quarian arc was named but <laughs> yeah nor me, you, nor me. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely see I could definitely see that happening because the Quarian arc was much larger than any of the other arcs there were I believe a total of five species on there. Yeah, yeah. The Orions, the Drell, the Volus, Hanar, and Elcor, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So I could definitely see it being, you know, if it's got to be a massive arc in itself to sustain everyone, it could definitely warrant having its own game, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, or at least 
the next Mass Effect installment would be geared towards it specifically. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Whether, the, but it might not happen. Like you said, it may just um, come to light in comic book form, which which would be uh, fine for for comic the comic book readers of the Mass Effect franchise. But uh, I normally like. Oh yeah. I normally like. I normally like it in an interactive video game format. <laughs> um, yeah. But we we'll, we'll kind of have to I, wait I and see. Agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I I'd have to agree. I I would be fine, I guess, if they did it through comics and novels. It wouldn't be how I would want it because, you know, like you said, you'd want something interactive. And that's that's how I would prefer it because I would actually rather really experience it myself because I've never been that big on book reading, so to speak. I would rather play a game or watch a movie over it. And I know that a lot of people might disagree with that, but that's just kind of how I've always seen it. And especially with Mass Effect, I just, I would rather them be able to really present it through another game than just passing it off as a comic book series. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I agree in that, in that sense. And that, I mean, don't get me wrong, though, the, the comic books, they, they have their place. I, I like how they, no, but they normally tell, the, the comic books normally tell sort of like side stories or backstories. Nothing that's, major to it uh, not nothing that would be considered a major plot kind of issue <laughs> right um yeah oh go ahead no I, 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 that, that's that's my train of thought there gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i'm fine with it like i said it it has its place it's just that's that place is it for me yeah but there there were definitely plenty of fans and people out there that would be okay with that but definitely the community that wanted andromeda to excel and be an amazing game i know that bioware has let them down bioware and ea has severely let a lot of the community down yeah they in, kind of on dropped, that front dropped the ball there a little bit they um yeah, they definitely did i i being being a huge mass effect fan myself and that i would say uh, i do feel it was rushed whilst i admire and and some of the gameplay aspects i quite enjoy the the, the shooting and I, I do in some respects i do like how the abilities work but uh story presentation and other aspects and and continued support it's all been a, a let down yeah it, it was definitely a let down and i and that's kind of going back to our talk about the content the mass effect 3 had versus andromeda that's another thing that i'd like to you know gloss over at least yeah is how differently they play because going from andromeda solidly playing it for months and doing content on it to going back and playing mass effect 3 was it was just a huge shock for yeah. me and seeing how different it was because i remember the first game i got in i had, i had joined a game i was playing as one of my batarian enforcers and I was running around, and I was wondering, why can't I dash? Why, why, why yeah. am I not automatically getting in cover? What is, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, I, I mean, and, you know, it, it, I would use a power, and I was like, okay, why are all my powers on a cooldown now? Yeah, I, it was so <laughs> shocking about how different. Mass Effect has changed on at least a multiplayer front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's I, in terms of sort of like the fluidity of gameplay and stuff like that. It's it's. I think that is probably the only real aspect that of Andromeda that I could say maybe could be considered maybe a little bit better than Mass Effect Three, but that's 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 one small thing in a huge, huge lake. Uh, you know, one one fish in a lake, oh, yeah. so to speak. Uh, that's a really bad metaphor, uh, you know, uh, terminology <laughs> there. But uh, but yeah, um, th from Mass Effect Three in that, uh, pretty much every aspect is better. Um, although I do, if you do go back to Mass Effect Three, you will from Andromeda. If you do go back to Mass Effect Three from Andromeda, you will miss things like like the dashing and uh sometimes just how fast you can move um but sometimes in in retrospect in that being able to slow things down it makes things feel a little bit more well 
realistic. <laughs> it, it's hard to say that yeah. in, in a sci-fi game, but it makes oh, yeah. things feel a bit more grounded. I mean, there's there's things in in Mass Effect 3's multiplayer or Mass Effect 3's gameplay, or to, you know, or, or including single player, uh, things like light and heavy melee, being able to melee over cover. Uh, sometimes, in some respects, being able to lock yourself in cover is actually quite useful. Um, and and they're just it's, it is so different in that. And the other thing that um, some people in Mass Effect Andromeda may prefer is the individual cooldowns of abilities. Like like you mentioned, you know, you went in and then suddenly all your abilities are on one cooldown. But I suppose yeah, that that, it, yeah, go on. That is something that I I have to say I do prefer on Andromeda is the movement definitely does feel a lot more fluid yeah. and. In most cases, at least for my play style, I definitely do prefer that fluid movement. And the power recharge, it's a lot nicer having everything on a separate cooldown because it, it really lets you play and experiment with all of the different kind of combos that you can make. Definitely. Especially with the human juggernaut now. We have the human juggernaut, and he's he's a perfect example because having Fortify, shock, fortify Shockwave and Snap Freeze, you know, if he was... A Mass Effect 3 character, then using Snap Freeze, you're definitely going to have to wait a while before you could perform a combo with Shockwave. But for Andromeda, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, in, in from what I remember of Mass Effect 3, in that uh, uh, characters like the uh, the Paladin. Um, to be able to you know snap freeze and then uh, incinerate or energy drain you you had to kind of work so hard on getting that cooldown timer as small as possible just so you can use the second ability but oh, with yeah. andromeda it's nice to have that option knowing that even if i've got weapon even if, even if i'm using heavy weaponry i still have that option to create that combo with my ability one and two yeah i i definitely agree it's Mass Effect had those things going for it, or Andromeda had those things going for it, but that's, you know, what I kind of wish is the content would have kept coming. If Andromeda had received the multiplayer content that Mass Effect 3 had, I really do feel like it could have went on for as long as Mass Effect 3 multiplayer has yeah, gone on. Definitely. Now, on, this, on the single-player side, I, I can't really speak for that because... They're de they would definitely have to start coming out with DLC yeah. to keep a good portion of the community still wanting to come back because I do feel like if they only focused on multiplayer content for however long they did bring it, then even the multiplayer fans would definitely taper off. Yeah. Because it's going to frustrate them as well because, you know, I don't know of anyone who's bought Mass Effect solely for multiplayer. There, yeah. Everyone does love that single player story, but... I just, I wish that they would have continued it or at least come out with more newer things because it does seem like a lot of the content on Andromeda did feel kind of recycled. Yeah, yeah, I, in I, a sense. I can agree agree with that. Um, yeah, the, the, the only real sort of like new elements was the movement, but the rest had sort of, the rest, most of the abilities, they've already been seen in Mass Effect 3 and that, and were being used again uh, with Andromeda's multiplayer. Yeah, and that, that is kind of the bad thing, is I had ever wondered, once I started seeing these newer characters come out for Andromeda, is I wondered if we would actually see something really new, or if everything would just more or less be recycled from Mass Effect 3, because... You know, we had Snap Freeze, and the Krogan Gladiator would have been a great example of something new, but it's too similar to the Krogan Warlord, yeah. in a sense. And it's just, it really just seems like they could have done a much better job yeah. I with mean, how they brought content and newer characters and their abilities. I mean, most of, most of the classes in Andromeda could be pinned uh, to or bear similarities to characters. You could pick out characters from Mass Effect 3, and it's like, oh, that's character. For example, the Usari Adept in Mass Effect Andromeda, very similar to the N7 Fury with the Annihilation Field Fro. Okay, she doesn't have Dark Channel, but, you know, she is very similar. Right. Yeah, I, I just really feel like what they could have done with 
Andromeda they just didn't do. And I don't know why, if it was just like being lazy, because really all you can say as far as really new things were the siphon, bulwark, and concussive weapons. As far as I'm remembering right now, that was really the only straight up new things that weren't anything related to Mass Effect 3 that we've received. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I mean the the I'm trying to think off the top of my head. The only other things that I mean that some of the ket weapons, like the 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 Dan I remember being quite unique. I don't recall many uh, I can't think off the top of my head a weapon like that in Mass Effect Freeze Mode Fair. But that's you know that's right. that's that's just just one example and that's pretty much the only one I can think of. The Ishere in that is pretty much the one shot sniper rifle could be compared to the javelin, uh, the Geth javelin from Mass Effect 3. So there's there's lots of well, like you said, recycling. Yeah, and and a lot of that has to do with are they not thinking of newer things? Because even when it comes to certain other characters, because whenever we got our Batarians, we have the two Batarians, I kinda when I knew they were coming, I was hoping for getting some of the things back from Mass Effect 3 because I knew that they would be, end up recycling powers and I was really hoping to get like submission net or ballistic blades or and smash. That. Yeah, ballistic blades. That would have been a great one to have or blade armor. Yeah. <clears throat> now we did get the Batarian gauntlet, but that's really all we got back. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit yeah, I see what you mean in that. And in, in some respects, okay, the, the most recent character, the human juggernaut, uh, he, okay, he has the, the passive, the remnant armor, but he does feel very similar to the Batarian Scrapper in some respects with the snap freeze and the apex training mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah, he does, and I've kind of tried to play with him a lot and figure out how to make him a lot differently. And... He just seems like the only difference I can really see between the Juggernaut and the Batarian Scrapper is that the Juggernaut, really, you have to be much more close quarters than yeah. the Scrapper. And the Scrapper still has his ability to go longer range. And really, just because of the flat cannon and being able to use longer range weapons effectively over the Juggernaut, that's really all I can see differently other than the Juggernaut's Remnant armor passive, yeah. making him a lot more tanky. Yeah, it's that's like, really it. Yeah, it's it's not a clear, uh, it's not a clear definition. And, and and with Mass Effect Three, whenever they did release, uh, apart from one or two classes, like for example the Fortress classes, they they have, like the Fortress Soldier and the Fortress Sentinel from Mass Effect Three's multiplayer, they were similar. Uh, I think there was only one ability that separated them, but when they did release major DLC content for the multiplayer, like, for example, the Earth DLC that had the N7 characters. Each one of those N7 characters, there was no one else like them. They were they were oh, yeah. very, very unique in that. And and I think I think every I think everyone has one of the one of those characters as a, you know as in mm -hmm. their top five. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, all of the N7 characters, that's something that I was kind of hoping for with Andromeda is something similar to that and i know it probably wouldn't have been in seven i don't know how they would have made off with it being with apex team members now and the apex team i don't really know what they would have called it but i yeah. i had kind of hoped for something along those lines yeah it would have been it would have been nice to see n7 class return in some form um but uh but uh, i i i have little faith that the remaining three characters will be anything like that, unfortunately. Yeah, I I do have to agree with you. I my hopes and dreams have kind of been crushed, and I I just don't have any faith left with Bioware making any sort of comeback with Mass Effect. Yeah, I, it's it's going to be. I feel like it's going to be a letdown. Yeah, it's going to be a if it's very slim chance, shall we say, that it's going to return to its former glory. Um, like like we mentioned earlier, depending on what happens with Anthem may dictate what happens with any future Mass Effect content. But it is is a is a waiting game, unfortunately. But I don't think it's something we should get our hopes uh, up about. I think at the moment we uh, 
should, well, in some respects, thank, thank ourselves lucky that they haven't shut down sort of like the Mass Effect uh, free multiplayer servers. They're still up and running. Um, mm. from, you, from what you say on the Xbox, it's a healthy community there at the moment, a very good mm -hmm. alternative to uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. And for those who didn't like Mass Effect Andromeda but still wanted a Mass Effect fix, it's probably the best option they can get at the moment. This also applies for those of you on PC as well, um, because that, that, you can easily access on PC. However, if you're on, if you're stuck with PlayStation, well, you're out of luck unless you've got PlayStation Free, unfortunately. Yeah, that is definitely something I would say. The community for Mass Effect Three, like I said previously, for it for Xbox is definitely a very healthy community. There, I can get in games very quickly, and you know, like you just said, it. Going back to Mass Effect 3, it is much different, but if Andromeda has more or less let you down, or if you're still wanting newer Mass Effect content, and you, it doesn't matter if you have or haven't played Mass Effect 3 multiplayer before, it is still great to go back to it to enjoy everything we did have. Yeah. And I know that previously when I played it a lot back in the past, before I had even thought about doing YouTube, I played quite a bit of Mass Effect 3, but... There was nowhere I didn't unlock anywhere near all of the characters. And just going back and getting to a chance to play some of those characters, even some of the N7 characters that I didn't unlock, I know that I had never unlocked the Demolisher. Yeah. That is just an amazing <laughs> character. I was blown away by how much fun I could have. Or the N7 Fury. Yeah. It was ridiculous how much fun I was having going back and playing a five-year-old game, really. Yeah. It was... It was awesome it, being able to go back and enjoy that. I would definitely say that if, if you've never tried the uh, Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, then definitely it is, it's a perfect chance to go back and play, especially if you are on Xbox One or, or PC, because you will have... So, there's so much... Because you'll have all the DLCs there now. Um, there'll be so much content for you to sink your teeth into. It, it, it's, it's, it will... It will be a good experience and especially if you've got a group of friends to play with as well it'd be an excellent experience oh most definitely and i know if if you are a returning player on xbox for backwards compatibility wise if you are a returning veteran and you unlocked let's say you unlocked everything or one thing it doesn't really matter how much you unlock returning with backwards compatibility you will still have all of that so yeah, You know, in some cases it's a good thing, in some cases it's not. You might want a, f a fresh slate to kind of come back and grind through everything, but in most cases, you know, especially right now, returning to that with all of these new games, it might not be the best option to want to have to grind through everything again. Yeah. But yeah. It, it still will provide you that great Mass Effect feel to really get you away from Andromeda if, you, if it's left a sour taste in your mouth. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, probably the best best alternative we're gonna, you're going to get uh, for a long I mean, time when it comes to Mass Effect. It's it's definitely your best alternative, at least probably for quite some time. Yeah, and I, I must say it's 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 uh, it, it has made me jealous of the Xbox One's compatibility um, options. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as far as you know. Going back to content-wise, I imagine you will still be doing a lot of Mass Effect Andromeda content, especially with these new characters that are going to be coming out, because I do know that with these new characters, I will still be covering them. But beyond that, there's not a lot left to do, at least for me personally, because here on our channel, we are going to be covering a multitude of other games. Pretty, We're going to be doing Destiny 2 and... Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Call of Duty. We have a lot of other things that we will be moving on to, but, you know, Mass Effect will still always hold a place yeah. for our channel, and I imagine yours as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I mean, I want to uh, at least have a bog standard guide out for each one of the characters uh, for if anyone wants reference and stuff like that. And, and the, one of the great things about Mass Effect 3, well, Mass Effect multiplayer as a whole, both Andromeda and 3, is that no one build is right. 
you can have multiple builds. It doesn't matter. You just got to find one that works well for you. Uh, and I love, love, love making making them. And um, so I will continue to to produce these little videos up until um, probably the new year. Afterwards, I don't know what what direction we're going afterwards. I mean, we. We we do the odd destiny thing in that we don't do def destiny two we won't do destiny two as in depth as say we did destiny one but we still want to do the odd video, um, but yeah it's going to be interesting where the future where the future turns in terms of YouTube. <laughs> right, it it definitely is, and it's all you know it's it's kind of just a waiting game to see how it's going to turn out because you never really know what's going to come out, what's going to be announced. You know, yeah. it's it's always going to be a surprise. It's, it's, you know, more or less, it's a box of chocolates. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Definitely. Well, as, 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 um, well, we got, we picked Mass Effect Andromeda out of the chocolate box and it turned out to be not what we, we expected, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I guess in my sense, not being a, a fan of dark chocolate, Mass Effect <laughs> yeah. was a very large piece of dark chocolate yeah. with a lot of, fudge in the center <laughs> yeah yeah it had its good element but also it's 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 dark element <laughs> it did and it we'll just have to kind of wait and see what kind of box of chocolates uh we see in the future definitely definitely but i mean i mean regardless of how mass effect has uh turned out and the future it may bring us um I mean, this year alone in that has been great. There's been so many good games in that, that there's, there's, there's a whole plethora of content or games for us to sink our teeth into. I mean, you alone said you've got Destiny 2 coming up. Uh, if you're going to cover World War II and um, Battlefront 2, then that's, that's, that's a lot of content. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, as far as how much content we're going to cover that's something we're still kind of trying to figure out i do know that uh brian and i we're huge fans of destiny and we from day one we're going to be on it just really rolling out content but with world war ii and star wars battlefront 2 we're going to kind of wait and see what we bring to our channel it's it's kind of like what we were just talking about. We're gonna kind of have to wait and see what it holds yeah. in the future. Yeah, that's a fair point, and, and probably a wise wise thing to consider in gaming this uh, in this day and age. Oh yes, most definitely. So, Mister J, if uh, my subscribers or viewers are interested in finding your channel, where where can we find you? How about you guys head down in the description and. Dark will have a link for you to my channel and all of my subscribers. If you guys want to go check out Dark and all of his fantastic Mass Effect content, I'm going to leave a link down in my description for you to go to his channel. Go subscribe to him because he's a pretty swell guy. Damn straight. And if you're at all, especially if you're interested in Mass Effect 3 stuff, this guy does some damn good Mass Effect 3 content, especially as there aren't many Mass Effect 3 creators out there anymore. I appreciate it. Yeah, I I definitely do notice that there's not a lot of Mass Effect YouTubers. And being my first collaboration, I'm really happy that it was with a fellow Mass Effect YouTuber. Yeah, definitely. I was going to say, I mean, I've been I've I've been doing YouTube a fair while now, and I've always stayed away from collaborations. But I think, uh, yeah, I've enjoyed this. It's been good talking to someone about the pros and cons of Mass Effect Andromeda and the potential revival of Mass Effect Freeze multiplayer as well. It has. It is, it's been a really nice discussion, and I really do hope everyone viewing this video out there from my channel or Dark's, or if you're not subscribed to either of us, I really do hope you have enjoyed this discussion as much as we have been talking about it. Definitely. Well, Mr. J, thanks for joining me, and don't forget, if you like what you saw, subscribe and like for more. I Thank you, Dark. It's been a pleasure. So guys, there you have it, our podcast collaboration with Darkblade. I really do hope you enjoyed the video, and I will apologize again for the audio quality. It wasn't the best, but 
we'll have to make do because that is the best we could get it so again apologies for that but I really do hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please be sure to smash that like button it will really help our channel out on the road to 500 subs and that sub begs a question if you are new around here please hit that subscribe button as well as that little notification bell to know whenever we're putting out great content for you guys because we are putting content out every Monday and Friday as well as more whenever we have tons of content to cover because we are really deep in Destiny 2 right now as well as other games coming to our channel very soon so after in the end all of that said and done I will have links all down in the description for you guys to go check out Dark's channel as well as other Mass Effect videos that I have done here in the recent months so definitely go check all that out guys that's really all I have for you on this one this has been Mr. J313 and I will catch you on the next one